so I guess I'm doing another one of these. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna talk over some drawings and kind of talk about my life. I don't know when I decided that the best way to get my feelings out is just to record over a bunch of time lapses, but you know, the other one got quite a bit of views, so maybe these are resonating with people. Uh, so since the last recording, I think I've been in a bit of a better headspace, but it's not ne necessarily uh, better. <laughs> um, I got another job. I know I talked a little bit about not having a job in the last one. I work with dogs now, which is funny because I've always been more of a cat person. <laughs> Um, I'm kind of struggling with mor morality, mortality, uh, I'm gonna die, we're all gonna die, it's kind of scary, but that's okay, um, and just the fact that I'm gonna be turning 18 next month, uh, I was asking my, uh, dad and stepmom if I could go somewhere with a friend, uh, over the weekend, and it's pretty far away, um, we live in, like, the bottom of North Carolina, and I wanted to go to Charlotte so I could go to uh, this theme park called Carowinds with my friend, and it would it's just going to be us walking around the park, and in no universe was I ever expecting that I would be allowed to go, just me and my friend, but uh, especially because, you know, she's a girl, um, but I'm allowed to go, and I'm going to, and I'm pretty stoked about it. Um, <laughs> actually, me and my friend, uh, I won't say her name, but we hang out a lot, like, any day that I'm not at work, I'm usually playing games with her or we're going somewhere, and we have this problem where we just get into this, these situations, like, we joke about it all the time, just situation after situation. Uh, we went to Chili's one time, and it was just us, and, um, the waiter gave us a, a couple's discount, which was really fun, and then, um, there was this guy, we were finishing our food, I had gotten potato soup because it was really good. <laughs> and this this guy walked up to our table and he was like, hey, do you ladies like magic? And I am an idiot. And I was like, yes, I love magic. And he's like, do you believe magic is real? And I was like, I mean, not really, but you can you can try. So he did, he tried, he showed us some magic tricks. And they were actually really impressive, like he guessed my phone password and he did like all these crazy thing with cards and i am naive <laughs> i'm extremely naive but he was good so at the end he was like all right i'm paying for my daughter's surgery and i'm just trying to get some money if you guys liked it would you want to give me some money and i did not have any cash on me the only thing i had is card but my friend did have cash and she ended up giving him a 20. <laughs> And that was probably the first situation that we ever got ourselves into. Um, I, I don't know what it is. I don't necessarily consider myself approachable. Um, I'm very much into like punk and emo fashion and culture, but I guess my Doc Martens and spiked collars aren't enough to ward away people. <laughs> there was a time that uh, we went to the mall and we were, we were eating these uh, like really good burrito tacos. Uh, and it's like been a thing ever since then where we just go to the mall and we get burrito tacos It's the same thing every time and they're delicious But so we were sitting at like the middle of the food court and this old man comes up to us and he goes Hey, do either of you girls have boyfriends? And we both just kind of look at him and I'm like No <laughs> And uh, he kind of, he, he stops for a second and like he has his hands on the table at this point. He's like bent over, he's looking at us and he's like, okay, whenever you do get boyfriends, make sure he treats you right. And then he walked away and it was, it was a very strange encounter. It's not ever something I expected to, um, to, ha to happen, um, which, you know, that's innocent. That's completely fine. Um, but it was, it was just interesting. It was just completely out of nowhere. He said that and walked away. And uh, I told my family about it later, and they were like, he was probably seeing if you had boyfriends to, to see if you were alone or not. But um, I don't think that's the case. I know where I live, there's a pretty big problem with uh, human trafficking. Um, but I don't, I, I like to have trust in people. I don't think that everyone is out to hurt everyone else. Also, I just have a soft spot for like old people. I think they're silly. <laughs> um, 
but yeah there was another time we had watched um it was insidious the red door this was like a week or so ago and we went to watch it whenever we came out of the theater that movie was awful by the way um so during the movie we were we were kind of like chattering a bit we were being very quiet about it it was just like whispering back and forth to each other but the guy that was directly in front of us turns around and says shut the fuck up <laughs> and it was um it was very interesting and then he just starts like mumbling to himself like it was louder than we were being he was just mumbling to himself about how much he hates like, the youth it was really it was really interesting um he had a comb over him and his son looked like they had just came back from um like a like a bible camp it was very interesting he had a he had a, a woman there with him who i'm assuming is his wife i don't like to assume but uh she started like muttering with him and like nothing they're saying is decipherable but it is just really funny and she had her feet up on the um the seat in front of her the entire time it was it was very interesting and during the movie there were these boys they were like very clearly middle school boys and um the entire time they were just gasping and like gulping whenever they thought something scary would happen it was like supposed to be a joke and i hate that it got like a like a giggle out of me a couple of times because the movie was bad like it was not interesting at all it was a very bad movie <laughs> um which is a shame i really enjoyed the first insidious movie i don't know about any of the other ones but um yeah and, and then they had their feet and they were kicking my friend's seat the entire time like trying to get a reaction out of her and she wasn't doing anything so and then there was this there was this old man also in the theater he was sitting like completely alone and away from everyone else and um he would just like cough so loud just like randomly in the movie he would like start dry heaving and uh <laughs> that always got a laugh out of me too which I know coughing in, in public is kind of awkward, so I hope he didn't hear me laughing. It was just kind of funny considering the circumstances. There was just so much happening. But uh, what this story is really about is we were walking out of the theater, and it was raining really bad. And uh, it was like a, a town square type thing, so you have to park away, and you can walk around the town. So we had parked like kind of far away, because whenever we went in the theater, like it wasn't raining. And so whenever we came out, it was pouring rain, and we didn't have an umbrella or anything. So we were just kind of standing under the cover of the theater and we were just waiting. We were kind of looking around, seeing if the rain would stop at all or just like slow down even just a little bit. And this man comes up to us and um, he says, hey, where are you Where are you, ladies parked? And once again, I'd just like to mention, I'm an idiot and no one should ever do this. But I was like, oh no, we're pretty far away. And he was like, okay. And he kind of like acted like he was going to walk away, but then he came back and he was like, let me walk you, let me walk you ladies to your car, um, you know, uh, I don't want you getting wet. And I'm like, okay, um, all right. So I kind of look at my friend and like, we don't know what to do at this point because we were completely alone. So we we're like, okay, you know, that's fine. And um, so he's walking us back to our car and uh, he, he's like, I'm, I'm homeless and I, I just kind of walk around and talk to people in hopes that, um, you know, I could get some money. And once again, I have no cash because I haven't gotten paid yet at this point. And so Bailey pulls out her wallet and she gives him like a couple of dollars because she doesn't have much cash either. And um, he's like, okay, it's the thought that counts because, you know, she apologizes. She's like, you know, I don't, I don't really have a lot of cash on me. He's like, you know, that's fine. But I'm like, yeah, no, I don't, I don't really carry cash. I don't have anything. And I guess he doesn't believe me because whenever we get to the car, um, like he leads my friend to her, her side of the door because she's driving. And then um, he's like, ma'am, I hate to bother you, but I know you have cash. And I'm like, I, I really don't. <laughs> um, I really, really don't have any cash, I promise. Like, uh, it was, I just kind of like got in the car and he's like, all right, God bless you. And I'm like, OK, because I felt really bad about it, um, you know, uh, I haven't really had like the most wealthiest upbringing you know there's been periods where um me and my family my mom or my dad have had to stay with friends or with uh, my grandparents you know i i understand and i have a lot of sympathy for um the homeless people because there's a lot of ones uh in in my area that i live in so i did feel really bad i was like it was very nice that he was walking us to his car and everything but i guess just like the thought that anything could happen 
is what got me so shaken up we went to go get some frozen yogurt after and i kind of just like sat there <laughs> um i have really really bad social anxiety and i feel like that's really common for artists to say <laughs> but um I'm, I'm on really high medication for it um it's classified as severe and you know it i i like interacting with people i really do i like telling jokes and being funny but I don't know, something about this whole, like, that whole entire day with the people in the movie theater, and it was just way too much interaction for me. It was getting quite scary, because, <laughs> um, there was, we would went to a bookstore before as well, where, um, they were, like, just talking to the barista, that sort of thing, and then there were other people there, and they, you know, were saying hello and that sort of thing, and it's like, sometimes I, I wonder if I'm fit to be a functioning member of society, but at the same time, I don't think normally uh two teenage girls get approached that much in public so um i don't know it's a lot especially if you're not asking for the interaction like you know if you go into a shop and you know you're expected to kind of um interact with the shop owner the employees and not really the other customers that are there um which i mean is fine you know if someone says hello i will gladly say hello back and if they want to engage in conversation i'll try my best but it, it is something i definitely have to recharge from after and too much of it at once is um distressing to say the least <laughs> but um yeah i'm pretty excited so i get to go to carowinds this weekend with my friend alone <laughs> um it's gonna be fun i think as long as we don't get into any more situations um yeah She's gonna pay for my ticket and um, I'm gonna have to pay her back <laughs> because uh, I don't have a bank account. I don't have a social security card because mm, after my mom died, it got lost somehow. And um, so I haven't been able to get my permit. I haven't been able to, um, like I've taken driver's ed and everything, but I can't get my permit. I can't um, get a bank account. So I just have some checks laying around that I can't cash yet until I get a new SS card, which is fine. <laughs> You know, I'm surviving with it. It is kind of hard to work whenever um, there's really no goal. There's really no prize, I suppose, which maybe is a little bit selfish. Uh, I think I mentioned this, but I'm working with dogs now. Uh, I work at this local, I don't know if it's local, I think it's corporate owned. I know there's other locations in North Carolina, but I don't know about anywhere else. Um, it's this place called Club K9, and, uh, it's a doggy daycare and boarding facility. So, I get to interact with dogs all day long. <laughs> I'm a receptionist, so that means I have to take the dogs back and check them in and bring dogs out to their owners and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, a lot of dogs are very kind and they're sweet little babies, but some of them like to give me trouble. <laughs> a it's mainly doodles that I've noticed as well, like golden doodles, labradoodles, that sort of thing. They do not like getting into their rooms or their kennels if they're for daycare. They don't like listening to me. Very stubborn little pups, but I, I always make it work, you know. It, it usually just takes a little bit of petting and maybe a couple treats, but they're usually okay. Uh, I got bit by a Rottweiler earlier this week. I had to file an incident report and everything. Um, yeah, <laughs> it hurt. My finger actually still hurts from it a little bit, but it's okay. I don't mind. But yeah, uh, I don't know. I actually put together the compilation of all, like, the videos in this about a month ago, because I was going to create a video where I just read out my essay about Red Hood, but, um, because I mentioned that in the last video that I made, that I had to write an entire essay about... <laughs> uh jason todd for my ap seminar class but the the essay used uh, some prompts that were given for the seminar class and i would have had to rewrite the entire essay to take those out so you know i didn't really feel like it so i just kind of stopped and this this uh whole video has just been kind of sitting on my phone waiting for me to voice over it and i was gonna write something else entirely different uh to kind of go over it but I don't really feel like it. <laughs> um, I really like watching those video essays um, where it's just people that kind of talk about like uh, the, the mysteries or and now 
I really don't like the murder mystery or like the people who talk about murderers on YouTube. I despise those people, actually. I used to be really into them, but then I started like, uh, my hallucinations started picking up again, so I had to stop. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I really want to go into forensic pathology, so in like, in baby terms, I want to cut open dead people and see how they died, which seems morbid, but I think it's a really interesting field. Um, I don't know, I feel like the people on YouTube, not to say all of them, because obviously I don't watch the videos anymore, but a lot of the ones I used to watch, it was very exploitative, uh, you, you know, just kind of using these heinous crimes and actions, and they can say that it's for an educational video, but it's not educational. People watch these videos, and then you look at the comments, and it's all people like, oh my god, uh, I just think it's kind of gross. <laughs> um, now, I do like watching, like, Wendigoon and stuff. I love Wendigoon um, and that entire crew. I can't really think of any of the other people that make those kinds of videos, but I do watch them a lot. It's mainly just whatever is on my, um, For You, not my For You page, oh my god, my recommended. <laughs> um, but I'm someone who has to have like a billion things going on at once. Uh, my friends call it undiagnosed ADHD and I call it additional sparkle. Um, <laughs> I have to have, like last night I was drawing and I had a video of someone drawing and talking over it and then I also had my chemical romance music videos in another tab playing and i would just switch between the music videos and the the drawing video but they were both playing at the same time so i had the audio for both <laughs> and i was also texting my friend while i was drawing um i get bored very easily um yeah so a lot of these are old, like I mentioned. Some of them I know I could definitely do better now, but I was just kind of going through all my old Procreate videos and seeing what I could find so I could make something. Um, I'm mainly just like talking, I guess. Sometimes I get really deprived of uh, social interaction, I feel like. <laughs> Even though I'm a, a receptionist now, it's still um, meaningful conversations, I suppose. I don't know. Um, I've been a lot better about being able to watch other people draw now. I'm a lot more confident in my artistic ability, I suppose. Not, like, confident, but, like, secure, I guess. Because it's not really shown in this video, because I, I have to draw on paper a lot. Because if not, then I'm using Procreate on my phone. And I have an iPhone 11, um, which I'm extremely grateful for. So, but the screen isn't that big. And I use my finger, so, um, I don't know if anyone else draws on your phone. If you do, hello brother, but it can be a little bit hard to, uh, do, like, full illustrations with, like, good posing and stuff, which I think that's just a me problem, because I've definitely seen other people be able to do it amazing. And I've been drawing on my phone since, um, well, I guess iPod. I used to draw on my iPod Touch. I had an iPod Touch 5. <laughs> Uh, whenever I was in elementary school and I used to use this app called Framecast and that's what I would draw on all the time but um, Yeah, I think I got a little bit spoiled whenever I had my screen tablet even though I was using Autodesk sketchbook and I despised Autodesk sketchbook um, But now I just have my phone because my tablet stopped working I'm hoping, I'm gonna start saving up my checks and stuff and I'm going to get an iPad and an Apple pencil um, because I get paid twice a month, so the paychecks are pretty big, so I'll give it like two months and I'll be able to afford one. Maybe one month if I work a lot of hours, because I usually work around like 60 to 70 hours a week, and I get paid 11 an hour, so. I didn't really need to go into all that detail, but I just kind of felt like it. <laughs> um, this is specifically Teen Titans Go fan art. Uh, as a huge DC fan, I'm tired of pretending I don't enjoy Teen Titans Go. I, it w I was obsessed with it as a child, I loved Raven, and, um, yeah, don't kill the part of you that's cringe, kill the part that cringes, so. And it's funny, because I've actually seen a bit of a resurgence, maybe not like recently, maybe like a couple months ago, where there was more people like posting, specifically on like DC Twitter, or sorry, X now, but there were people posting Teen Titans Go clips and being like, this is actually kind of funny, which 
definitely I could do without like the fart jokes and gross out humor, but sometimes it's just, it's really random. And it's, I think for me, it's more of just seeing my favorite characters behave in such a way that it's like, that would never happen. But um, yeah, <laughs> I like it. I watch it whenever I'm sad sometimes. There's a couple episodes that I just think are stupid and I won't watch them, but um, I really like the ones that have some of the Justice League characters in them. Like, uh, I think a couple months ago there was a newer episode that had Booster Gold in it and I flipped out. He even had a speaking role. I was excited. I love Booster Gold and Blue Beetle. I think they're so cute. Um, and I, I just, I love Michael's story. I think he's a very strong person. Uh, because he goes through like all this stuff and he has to hide it because he's a time lord, I guess. I don't know. He's really cool. I love Booster Gold. And then who doesn't love Blue Beetle? Uh, every time, because I've been going to the movies quite a bit recently, um, more than I ever have before. But me and my friend, we like to go. Like we went and saw Barbie the other day and it was really good. Um, but so I, every time we get the, the new Blue Beetle movie, that comes on like for previews I'm like we have to go see it we have to okay but anyway so I guess this is the end of the video here's a little montage of some drawings that I've done recently that didn't make it into the video and um thank you guys for watching or listening or whatever you're doing um and have a wonderful day <laughs>